Hi there, I'm Bob Fonseca. Welcome to my media room. If you haven't been here before, this is where we do all kinds of uh, weird live <laughs> YouTube shows and unboxing and a little bit of equipment stuff. Uh, but today we have an unboxing, a vinyl unboxing, and I think an important one um, because the return address is Music Direct from Chicago, which means this is a mobile fidelity record. The size of the box, the thickness leads me to believe that it's going to be a one-step and uh, I've had a few one-steps on order Muddy Waters Folk Singer the uh, first Van Halen record I Robot by Alan Parsons and the other one oh uh, the Eagles uh, Hotel California I own one one step already and that's the Eagles self-titled I haven't opened it or listened to it yet um, that may be one I flip but if this is the one that I think is in here, and I'm pretty sure, based on the news that I've been reading, uh, this is not a flippable one. This is going to be Muddy Waters' folk singer, uh, with any luck, and uh, been looking forward to it. So let's 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 get it done. And it is a one step. You can tell by the. Uh, there you go. Muddy Waters Folk Singer, Ultra Disc One Step, now pressed on Super Vinyl. There you go. We'll flip it over in, in just a second. Uh, first impressions, um, love the box, love the, uh, love the cover. I have this in various configurations on, on CD, and I also have it on Acoustic Sounds um, or Analog Productions, I guess. Uh, 45 RPM is that right it may be a 33 RPM that I have uh, this is going to be 45 RPM so it's going to be two discs and I think on this unboxing I'm actually going to break the seal live for you to see what's inside I've not opened personally a one step before but this is a this is an important record um, it's it's a record that I got turned on to only maybe two or three years ago as uh, um, I kept reading more and more stuff about Muddy Waters' folk singer. Uh, it's an incredible acoustic uh, recording. Basically, you know, maybe one of the first unplugged records, technically. Uh, and one of the few uh, true blue CDs that could be considered a true audiophile record. Um, it's acoustic, like I said. Uh, you've got... Buddy Guy on acoustic guitar, Muddy Waters on acoustic guitar and vocals, and you've got Willie Dixon on, on the string bass, and Willie Dixon also produced this. This is uh, Muddy's fourth album, and it's from 1964, and uh, it was recorded in Chicago in the Turmar, is that right? I'm not familiar with the studio, but the Turmar Studios in Chicago. And again, it really qualifies as a... Uh, as an audio file recording. I don't know of many other recordings that I have that actually make you feel 100% like like you're in the studio, uh, as, as does this one. Uh, just looking at it, my initial impressions, it's got this gold uh, band across the top, original master recording, of course, this hype sticker. I guess that's considered a hype sticker. On the bottom, embossed in uh, gold, Ultradisc One Step Pressing by Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab. I'm, I don't want to get into the technical aspects of, of what a one step is. Um, you can read about it online. Just know that uh, it takes fewer steps to go from the original master tape to the actual record that's inside here. I think it's only a couple of steps, actually, whereas other, other uh, vinyl pressings may take as many as four or five steps or whatever. Um, this is just as close as you can get to the original, and they only do a certain number of um, of pressings on any given. Uh, I think they're called stampers. Um, but uh, just as as long as we're talking about numbers, this is number one thousand one hundred ninety four. I have read that it. Oh, it says right there. It is a limited edition of ten thousand. So I think it's relatively low number. Uh, it would have been cool if it was under a thousand, but I'll take one thousand one hundred ninety-four every day of the week. Now the question is: Should we open it or should we not open it? Um, like I said, I don't intend to flip this one. I'm I'm not a big record flipper anyway, but man, 
I really do want to hear this and maybe in a future video I'll review it so let's uh let's throw caution to the wind the retail on this is $125 plus tax uh, I believe from what I've read they're already sold out and the and the uh the value of these will be certainly rising um currently on eBay they're going in the $200 range right now I think that will probably double as the uh as people um find out about this record which has already been announced and released because I have it and they're just finding out about it and they they're not going to want to miss out so the price will probably you know, keep rising over the years. We have to see. That's kind of the fun thing about uh, the one steps. You know, just kind of watching the value grow. And uh, I'm going to have to get a knife. And, you know, seeing what serial number you get. I want to be very careful here. I've got my X-Acto knife. I think I'll do the old cut along the seam trick. Just a little bit there, very carefully. And uh, we'll get this thing opened up and see how it's packaged. This is one of my first unboxing videos. Bear with me. Just seeing if there's any, uh, there's no, the actual structure of the box is, is great. Uh, great packaging from Music Direct and MoFi. Uh, let's get rid of the cardboard box and we'll just set it on the Ikea leather sofa here. So we can get a better look. Um, the edges look good. This is kind of a matte finish. Um, I'm going to compare it. Hang on a second. Let me grab my Analog Productions Money Water. I just wanted to compare the art because that looks a little, uh, a little blurry to me. Let's see. I'm, I'm looking for the... Now I don't know where I put my Muddy Waters record. Uh, it's here somewhere. Um, hang on a second. It may be right here. Here it is. I just wanted to compare the art. Here's my uh, analog productions of Muddy Waters. It is a it is a 33, by the way. Um, I would say, unless there's more art on the inside, and I'm not sure yet. Um, it just may be the matte finishing process here, but not as sharp as the kind of uh, semi-gloss uh, tip-on. I believe this is a tip-on jacket. I think it is. This is a tip-on jacket. Um, this Analog Productions art, at least compared to the art on the box, is a little sharper and a little um, got a little more contrast or whatever. Uh, and this may just be the fact that it's, you know, printed on a very matte kind of surface here. But maybe there's more artwork on the inside. So let's do this. Let's, let's lift that off. You've got the MoFi foam. Interesting thing about this foam. I have a, uh, a UHQR Sgt. Peppers from the, I want to say the early 80s. And I don't, I'm looking at it over there. I don't remember the exact number. That was a series of a thousand and I have one. And this foam over the years, the whatever foam is made of, which I guess is foam, <laughs> has reacted with some of the paper. Now, it hasn't damaged the record or anything like that, but um, it, it is kind of just, um, uh, uh, I guess reacted is the best word. It just kind of reacted with some of the paper products on the inside, and there's some staining on some of the supplemental materials because of the foam. So be wary of the foam. That should be on a t-shirt. Um, here you go. See? There's a good reason why I didn't explain to you what the one-step process is. Because when you buy a one-step, they'll give you the whole description. But you see here, just the basic two steps from the lacquer to get to the vinyl. Whereas a regular record, even an audiophile pressing, goes uh, one, two, three, four, five steps or four steps as opposed to two steps from the lacquer and so there's a good explanation there with charts and graphs and everything so here we go we got a nice see now the artwork is getting a lot better i didn't know that this was going to come with a uh, with an insert it's a beautiful photo and that's pretty much what you hear on the recording now any recording you get of this is going to be great whether it's cd or 
just the regular vinyl pressing or the analog production pressing. They're all very spacious and very alive and very detailed and airy. I mean, you can really, it's one of those recordings that you can really just hear the room. You hear this room. Now, I don't know if that's how they're positioned on the recording. I'm, I'm assuming they're just positioned that way for the, for the photograph, but you definitely get the sense of, you know, Muddy in the middle and the two guys on either side. Um, and here is the actual cover, maybe a little clearer, but again, printed on matte, so um, it doesn't pop. It doesn't, it's nice, don't get me wrong. It's, it's as hard, this is heavy duty board here, or, uh, you know, cardboard, um, and uh, it doesn't pop like the, the kind of the satiny, glossy analog productions cover, but it's a nice reproduction. It actually feels nice to the touch. It's got that soft matte feeling. And then uh, you've got more great pictures in here of a young Buddy Guy. I mean, who doesn't love Buddy Guy, right? Buddy Guy, Willie Dixon, and, uh, you know, a relatively young Muddy Waters cashing in on the folk scene of the mid-60s, you know, maybe thanks to Bob Dylan or whatever. This is a blues record, not a folk record. But I guess they were trying to uh, capitalize a little bit on the folk label by um, giving it this title. And the fact that they're all acoustic, you know, gives it a folky thing. So that's what I read and that's what I'm passing on to you. There you go. Some nice liner notes. And uh, again, because it's 45 RPM, you're only getting two or three songs a side for a maximum reproduction quality uh, so i'm looking forward to that so there's that so far very impressed with the packaging and then this looks beautiful look at this so it comes in two different sleeves each one has their own sleeve very heavy duty i mean look that's uh that's like as thick as almost a double album just for that single 45 rpm and that's just that's just high quality there that's the MoFi stamp. By the way, I have a MoFi Studio Deck turntable with a MoFi Master Tracker cartridge. And uh, it's just MoFi and MoFi goes together. I guess I'm a MoFi fanboy. I have been since the late 70s, early 80s. And to get something of this quality in my hands and to be able to play it, I'll probably, op probably open the Eagles one now that I've seen how great this is. And let's just hope they're all um, they're flat. Um, and then the records themselves come in white cardboard here and then there you go very classy black gold on black white on black label uh, inside of a mofi sleeve that's a dollar value right there <laughs> and so there's two of these and uh, let's hope they're dead flat I'm not gonna take them out of their sleeve I'm just gonna kind of look initially to see uh, because um, Odd thing, I bought a 45 RPM Bob Dylan Blonde on Blonde a few months ago, and one uh, like disc number two was serial bold, uh, and that means that it was just cupped and curved a little bit, enough where it would slip a little bit on the turntable. I wrote to Mofi, uh, Mofi and within a, easily within a week, they had returned, uh, told me to keep the defective disc, and they sent me a new disc number two, so... A quality company, a quality product. Here's disc. I mean, hang on a second. Disc number two. Again, just man, just I'm glad that my hands are clean because I don't want to leave any fingerprints on there. It's just a beautiful. I mean, it's substantial. You hold it in your hand. You know, you're holding something special. I cannot wait for the the Van Halen reissues, the iRobot that I have, and the uh, Hotel California is going to be amazing. And, you know, those could come any time in the next two years. Here's more of that, sorry, MoFi, but maybe reactive foam. Here, let me go, let me grab that, uh, that night, early 80s um, Beatles, hey, UHQR. This is, this disc goes for crazy money. Crazy money. It would be crazier money if I hadn't opened it back in the 80s, but I think I still have my receipt from Mobile Fidelity on Lavaca. Yeah, and I do. And there was a time, let's get the receipt out first. This is the Beatles Sgt. Peppers. 
I bought this on November 26, 1982 for $50. It's probably in the $1,000 range right now. For this record, UHQR Sgt. Peppers. Uh, I will give you the, uh, it looks like my girlfriend at the time, Tracy Hartman, may have bought it for me. <laughs> as her name is on the receipt as well. Hadn't thought about her in a while. Thank you, Mobile Fidelity, for that. Uh, you can see here where the foam has kind of reacted on the paper a little bit. This is the certified that this ultra high quality recording by Mobile Fidelity is one of, oh, one of 5,000, not 1,000. One of 5,000. I have number 886. And again, sealed cop copies of these go for crazy money. Uh, well cared for copies such as this go for crazy money. Uh, there was a time when I actually kept... I've only played it a few times over the years. And you can see I've kept... Um, I kept a card of when I played it and what sides I played. Uh, and so that's uh, a dozen times... Maybe 13 times there, 14, 15. The last time I played this was on January 20th, 1989. I played both sides. And uh, again, this is one of the very first Mobile Fidelity um, UHQR, really. You can see again where the foam, you see how the foam reacted? Now, it doesn't hurt the recording at all. Uh, it's just the technical specifications manual, but, you know, Maybe take the foam out and replace it with something else. I don't know what the solution is, but uh, or maybe just the acid in the paper. I don't know. I don't know what caused it to do that. It has not suffered any trauma or been in any flood. As you can see, I mean, everything is just it's not wrinkled or anything like that. Um, and uh, comes in this sleeve and then again, another inner sleeve. So you kind of got two unboxings for the price of one today. Uh, and again, this was uh, released in, I bought it in 1982, I'm assuming it was released in 1982, because I had it on order for a while. Um, doesn't say what date here, it may be inside somewhere, but uh, there you go. So there it is, the double unboxing, two for one, a vintage unboxing of a Mobile Fidelity UHQR Sgt. Peppers number 886 of 5,000. And then here, uh, an unboxing of Muddy Waters Folk Singer number 1194 of 10,000. Happy to have them both. Looking forward to getting more. And uh, I will do a review of the Folk Singer album as soon as I give it a spin on the studio deck MoFi table. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being in the media room uh, and uh, hope to talk to you soon.